Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. Uh, my name is Tim Cusick. I am the Training Peaks WK04 Product Development Leader. Um, first off, let me just say thanks for everybody being here tonight. Uh, really appreciate uh, all the people who come to our webinars and look to learn about uh, WK04 and all the cool things you can do with it. Two, I want to let you know um, you can ask questions throughout the webinar and the little gray control box on the right. I know you're all in mute mode. But in the little gray control box, there is a question area. I see a lot of familiar names, so most of you will know how to answer, ask those questions. So please feel free to ask them as we go along. OK, basically here to present uh, with us tonight is Hunter Allen. Hunter is the uh, founder and CEO of Peaks Coaching Group. And I'm pretty sure probably everybody on tonight's call knows Hunter. I am switching over to his screen so that he can take you through some pedaling power analytics. So Hunter, say hello, and I'm going to go ahead and go on mute and just listen in the background. All right. Thanks, Tim. Super excited to be here, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody can see my screen. Let's see. Here we go. Show my screen. There's that little, that little lovely permissions there. Thank you so much. All right. Swap displays. We are ready to go. Cool. And we see well, and hear you, so you're good. All right. Thank you, Tim. Well, thanks for the introduction there, Tim. I appreciate it, and uh, you know, and, and super glad to be here and be on on this. And um, you know, I've been doing, as you know, probably a lot of work here in the past couple of years on peddling information and looking at this right left data and trying to figure some of these things out. And um, you know, it, it is a one of these things that is you know we continue to learn, just like we're always continuing to learn about training with power and our bodies and how we work. And one of those things that that uh, you know we're we're seeing new metrics for, we're seeing new ideas from other riders, from other coaches, and we're continuing to to progress along this path uh, so that we all improve and we all get better. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, pedaling and how this all works. And like uh, Tim said, hey, put the questions in there, and we'll rock and roll on this. Um, questions at the end. So we've got some new pedaling metrics. So when we look at these things, first off, we have to understand what are our challenges to begin with. So there are only a few have the ability, you know, most of our power meters only measure, um, you know, just the total power, right? So, you know, your, your, your power tap hub, your SRM, you know, all these things just measure the total power that's going into that part. Some of these new devices can measure both independently, left and right. Okay, so it's really looking at okay, all of the left power, all of the right power. So off the top of my head, we've got Pioneer does this. We've got Garmin Vector Pedals does this. Does this. We've got Power Tap Pedals. We've got the um, Bebop Pedals. Okay, so many of you probably haven't heard about the the Bebop Pedals, but the Bebop Pedals. Um, there's a little known company in England called Factor Cranks. They also do it. And um, also the Info Crank. Uh, the Info Crank is another one that uh, is, is out there and measures it left and right. Now the problem here is the way that they measure these things is they really only measure the complete left side and then the complete right side. So it calculates this, so what's called balance, power balance. It measures the left leg and calculates this percentage, and it contributes to the total, so this is balance. So for example, if the left leg power is 150 watts and the right leg power is 120 watts, the total is 270 watts with 55% coming from the left leg and 45 coming from the right leg. Okay? So that all seems fine and dandy. All right? So let's just keep going down this rabbit hole. Here's what some of this data looks like on a high resolution power meter. This is the factor crank power meter. It measures every degree of the actual entire pedal stroke, so 360 times per RPM, and then records at 200 times per second. So an incredible rate of um, recording, an incredible amount of measuring. Um, you know, an hour and a half ride is like a 25 megabyte file. It's insane. But it's pretty neat, and it allows us to see what happens all throughout the entire pedal stroke, how these forces are applied. So we have positive forces here, then you have 
negative forces on the backside, and these are really kind of neutral forces here in this blue right there. Now, you'll notice this is the right crank arm. So here's the right crank arm. When the right crank arm is at, at this angle, the left crank arm has to be here, right, because they oppose each other. Okay. So the left power is the average of all the forces from the left leg. The right is all the forces from the right leg. Now, so let's kind of go down this a little bit more because we need to talk a little bit about you know, how this, this works a little deeper. All right, and so some other metrics, some other things that have come up, pedaling smoothness. So this is an amp plus metric that's come up. It's power average divided by power P max, okay, power max. So this is pedaling smoothness. A lower number means that a rider has a larger P max in relation to P average. All right, so for example, all right, so here's that P max, right? That's the peak of this, and really that's that's kind of a misnomer, and so that's that's a problem because all you guys realize that hey, you've seen P max before in WKO4, and that is not what these guys are talking about here. Okay, so this is really P peak right here. So don't get confused with P max in here the way that the AMP Plus folks talk about it and the way that it really should be talked about P max the way that we talk about it in WKO4. All right, I hope I hadn't confused you yet. Anyway, it's really the peak of the torque curve. Okay, here's the average in here. All right, so for example, if the average is 200, the peak is 1500, so let's say this is a really steep peak, then the pedaling smoothness will be 13%, right? Because you've got this massive peak and the power is really not spread across much of the pedal stroke. All right, now an opposite would be, let's say, the P average 350 watts, the P max here would be, or P peak rather, would be 700 watts, okay? So that's then pedaling smooth is 50%. All right, what does it tell us? Well, it doesn't tell us too much, but it can tell you maybe if you're more of a stomper, all right, if you really stomp on the pedals, all right, and you have a big peak of force, and it could be a nice teaching tool for some people to help them smooth out their pedal stroke, okay? Can we change it? Does it matter? You know, really it's one of these things that it becomes an awareness type of deal, and it allows the rider maybe to uh, become smoother so that they reduce some of this um, strength, you know, or just pure explosiveness that they're doing on the pedal. Okay, so that's pedaling smoothness. The next one is what is called torque effectiveness. All right, torque effectiveness is the sum of all the positive forces and the negative forces over a single stroke divided by the positive. So for example, we have 150 watts for positive, so let's say you do 150 watts here. Then you have on the other side negative 30 watts, okay? So here we got negative 30 watts. So you take torque effectiveness is 150 minus plus negative 30, all right, minus 30, divided by 150. So really 120 divided by 150 is 80%. You multiply it by 100 to break this the percentage out here. All right, so 80% there. Now, if you go the opposite way and say, okay, well, what if you've got 60 watts of negative forces here, where you've got 200 watts of positive forces, then now your torque effectiveness is 70% instead of 80, okay? So does it really mean anything? No, it really isn't. It really isn't the way that you're supposed to look at this information, okay? So it's, it's just not the way that we look at it. So from your perspective, I would pretty much ignore torque effectiveness when you see that in a um, amp plus metric, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. So again, most of these power meters don't have the ability to know when the crank is at top dead center, TDC, or BDC, bottom dead center. So we know that the leg opposes each other throughout that 360, 360 degree circle. So when the left leg is moving forward and down, the right leg is moving back and upward. So therefore, the positive force of the leg, right, when that pushes down, is opposed by the negative forces of the right leg, okay? How does this look? Whoops. <coughs> well, here's actually how we pedal. We really pedal in a phase, all right? The legs don't act independently. You are connected to the right and left are connected. So here, you can say the left leg is up here at three. Well, the right leg is over here at nine, right? So you're at three, then the other one is going to be over here, right? So it's really a phase in how we pedal. Here's really the way it looks like here. So you can see, you know, as that right leg comes up onto the 
power phase of the stroke, right, where it's get this peak here, 90 degrees or a little bit past it, maybe 100 degrees, you notice that there is on the opposite side this negative force is occurring from the left leg. Okay, now as the left leg comes around, boom, to 90 degrees, you got the right leg now over here at 270 is now starting to apply a resistive force. Okay, so we'll talk a little about that. That's important to understand because your balance could be based on the amp plus metrics. Remember, it's going to be just the left leg itself and then the right leg itself. It could be 5347. But in reality, when you look at this from a perspective of what we call gross power released and gross power absorbed, it could be 50-50, right? Or it could be completely opposite. It could be 47-53, all right? So it can be the opposite. All right, so anyhow, so again, let's keep, let's keep down this rabbit hole. So really, we don't have any metrics within um, the head units yet that really help us out. Um, and you know, we've come up with some pretty cool ones in WKO4. Um, Dr. Coggin certainly got to give credit where credit is due. Um, Tim also has been involved in this, and myself, and then Kevin Williams worked. We worked really hard on lots of pretty cool metrics here, and um, came up with these things right here: gross power released GPR. This is the gross muscular inertial and gravitational power released by one leg during the downstroke. Okay, so it's downstroke one leg. Gross power absorbed, the absorption, right? The power absorbed by one leg on the upstroke. Kurtotic index. This is the measure of peakedness, if that's a word, I think it is. Coggin probably made it up if it didn't of the pattern of force torque pattern power application during the power producing phase. Okay, so this is a, uh, a better way that we feel like is to look at the pedaling smoothness is really through the kurtotic index. So let's look at this from a uh, just a quick perspective here of kind of what we're, we're thinking about and how this looks on a chart. And then we're going to dig into some case studies. So don't worry, you're going to get some cool case studies here in a second. So. On this chart, if you'll notice the GPR left, this is gross power released in blue, okay? This red is gross power released in red, okay? So that's the red gross power release. Notice this interval right here. You can see that he's releasing more power with his left leg than he's releasing with his right leg just visually, okay? Now, if you look up here, here is, or sorry, down here, here's the gross power absorbed. So here you have gross power absorbed left, which is pink, all right? Gross power absorbed right, which is green. Now check this out, right? This is interesting because here he's releasing more power with his left leg, yet it appears that he's also absorbing more power with his right leg. Okay, so he's kind of got a double negative going on, right? Or maybe it's balancing out, right? And on the opposite side, he is releasing less power with his right leg, but he's also absorbing less power with his left. Okay, so interesting, right? Up here at the top, this is the kurtotic index, kurtotic index left, kurtotic index right. So you can see that the smoothness here of his left is not as smooth, okay? And the kurtotic index of the right shows it a little smoother, or that phase does, okay? That phase, remember it's really a phase, it's the right, plus the left, okay? Now, here's another chart <coughs> called the Zorro chart. And um, can you guess why it's called the Zorro chart? Ha <laughs> ha, right? It's the big Z, right? So here you've got the same thing that we just looked at, but now plotted in a scatter plot. Sometimes looking at it in a scatter plot helps you really visualize a little more accurately what's going on. Okay, so now it's very obvious. We can see that the kurtotic index of the left leg is is not as smooth. So that leg is much more peaky. Okay, and then the right leg is less peaky. It is more spread around the pedal stroke. Now you also notice there's concentration of the points here, and those are at certain wattages. Most likely, it's really just you know when he was riding easy, spent more time in those areas type of thing. Okay, and again, you see this left one release more power than the right one, and then again the right one absorbs more power than the left one. All right, now 
You can do another thing here is the bilateral power duration curve. Okay, so this is another one that's pretty interesting here that Coggin came up with that um, I like to look at is the bilateral power duration curve. So what this is is really it's the power duration curve, but just looking at the left leg and the right leg um, by itself. Okay, so you've got left P max, right P max. Now that's not that peak, right? Not P peak. It's, P, it's truly P max. Left FRC, right FRC, left MFTP, right MFTP. Okay, wow, how cool is that, right? You can get model FTP for each individual leg, all right, looking at some of this data. Now, pretty interesting because um, that helps to bring out some ideas that, that might, you know, you might look at and try to think about, all right? So let's start to go into some of these ideas and theories. Okay, so now that we're there, all right, let's start to think about, you know, what does this mean and what is net power, right? So net power is the left leg gross power released minus the right leg gross power absorbed. This is your net power released for the left leg phase. Now when you got the right leg, you got the right leg gross power released minus the left power gross power absorbed, that one is the net power released for the right phase. Okay, so that's really what we're looking at is when we say NPR, okay, we're not just talking about a radio channel here, we're looking at the net power released for the left or the right. Okay, so that's really what we're looking at. All right, so that's what we're going to see here in a second. All right, to set up these case studies, and I'm going to review this again, don't worry, I'm going to kind of talk you through it here, so this is kind of a bunch of stuff, but at the same time, this is the, this is the case study, normal day, first day, normal, no leg emphasis, you know, this is uh, go out, train, do your training, it is what it is. Day two, right leg waiting while standing, left leg waited while seated. Left, left, day three, left leg emphasis both standing and seated, right leg emphasis both standing and seated, day four, day five, right leg weighted standing, left leg weighted seated, basically repeat day two, comparing you know, some of these things to day five. Okay, so that's really what we're looking at. So I'm going to push escape here. We're going to go over to WKO, pull up some data. All right. Now, first off inside here, one thing that you're going to need to get is you're going to need to make sure you've got this pedaling metrics pack. Okay, so inside here, there's a pedaling metrics pack, and I just, I posted this pedaling metrics pack. I've got a few, um, charts in here, a few metrics in here that isn't, aren't in um, the other ones, and so uh, put, put that up on the chart library. So hopefully this will be up on the chart library in a little while. There's the chart library, all right? So for now, right, under here, if you don't have it, you can go in here and do pedaling, and then this is the pedaling met re metrics review pack right here, or report right there, okay? So that's what we're looking for. We need to see that pack. Okay, so first off, you got a lot of noise here. I mean, this is a lot of noise. Um, it is a ton of information. It's hard to see even what the heck is going on here. It's just it's too much noise. So you need to get rid of some of this noise. So for right now, we're going to eliminate a bunch of this data channels, okay? So first off, let's get rid of cadence, all right? Secondly, let's get rid of uh, speed. Third, let's get rid of temperature. All right, then let's get let's go over here and use your two fingers here if you're doing, looking with working on a uh, Mac. We'll get rid of left effectiveness. We're going to get rid of left smoothness. We're going to get rid. We'll leave power balance for now. We'll let get rid of right effectiveness and right smoothness. Okay, so we already kind of talked a little bit about these things anyway, um, and now we come into you know, some basic things here. We've got heart rate, we've got elevation, right? So we've got elevation, all right? So you can see that I did three hill repeats, all right? You've got left leg power, you've got right leg power, all right? And you've got power balance in here, okay? Now, power balance, again, it, it is it is what it is. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I'm not, I don't really don't think that this is a, a really great metric here, so um, we're going to get rid of that. However, it looks like that is right there. That's what I want to get rid of. There we go. 
All right, so we're going to get rid of that one. We don't really need to see that either. But what we need to see is here's our left and our right, and here, or here's, our, here's our left and right, and here's the intervals we did. All right, so first off, what we're going to do is we're going to look through some of these metrics. All right, so I'm going to go up here to the entire workout, all right, and let's look at a little bit of metrics here. So if you've got this pedaling review report with the net power released in here, all right, this will help you. You've got average power, cadence, left leg power, right leg power. Here's the ant plus balance right here. Okay, then you have asymmetry index. Asymmetry index, I'm not going to talk about tonight. It's an advanced kind of concept that we've been working on. Uh, still has a few bugs we need to work out. Average power released, gross power released on the left and the right, absorbed on the left, absorbed on the right. This is average effective pedal force, circumferential pedal velocity, maximal effective pedal force left and right. Okay, so things look pretty even there. All right, they look pretty even. Um, my balance looks off 4654, but again, I'm going to kind of ignore that for now. Net power released on the left, net power released on the right, 91 and 88. Okay, so that's really what's been released. Now, if you notice here, look at this, right? Left leg power, if you just average left leg power, it's 85. Well, when you actually get the net power, it's 91. All right, and notice this, look at this, left leg power here is lower than right leg power when you just look at that left leg and right leg independently. But when you actually work out the numbers, the left leg is actually releasing more power. It's not much. We're talking three watts here. All right, so all of a sudden, what looks like a possible imbalance, wow, 95, 94 to 85, 9 watts, it ends up being maybe not so much of an imbalance. Okay, so that's a really important thing to consider because you could be being led astray by looking at some of these numbers. Okay, now, what we did here, what I did rather, um, I went out and I did three, all right, intervals five minutes long, all right, and I did those up the same climb, and I did some experimentation, trying to figure out what's the difference between standing and seated. So the first one was all standing, the second one was all seated, and then the third one was both standing and seated. Okay, so both standing and seated. So let's look at standing to begin with. Okay, so here we've got standing. Now, you've got some other charts in here. We're going to sc scroll over here to gross power review chart, the basic one, okay? And this just shows you your GPR left, GPR right, GPA left, GPA right, okay? So just some basics in here, nothing crazy, all right? And from there, this allows you to kind of get a better understanding of, well, what's the left leg doing, that dark blue and the red is the right, you know, but at the same time, it's, eh, you know, they're from squiggly lines. So let's look at the curve. This is more clear now. What is the left leg doing, right? So it's releasing more power than the right leg is doing, and the absorption rate here is roughly the same, okay? So they're roughly the same. So that's interesting, right? So when I stand, it looks like I release more power, more power on the downstroke, all right? And then when I sit down, all right, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the seated one. What happens? It flip-flops. I release more power on the right when I'm seated than when I did when I stand. So look back to standing. Look, the blue line here is above. And then when I'm seated, it's flip-flopped. I'm releasing more power on the right leg when I'm seated, okay? So that's really interesting. All of a sudden, it's like, whoa, what's going on? And notice when I'm seated as well that my gross power released on the left is higher than my, or my, I'm sorry, my gross power absorbed on the left is higher than my gross power absorbed on the right. So again, my right leg's pushing harder but my left leg is also absorbing more power, all right? So then we got to go over here to net power released curve, all right? So now we kind of see what's our net power released left, blue, and what's our net power released 
right in red. So we come to sanding. And so this shows us now right away, oh wow, our net power released on the left. Yeah, okay, the left is releasing a little more power, five, eight watts or whatever, maybe maybe as much as 10 watts, okay? So that left leg's releasing a little more power standing. Then seated, well, pretty clear the right leg is definitely releasing more power seated, okay? And again, it's the right phase, okay? It's the right phase. It's the left and the right, right, in concert, all right? So that's really what it is. Now, we get here to the AM plant balance spot, uh, scatter plot. Again, eh, you know, this is the right, this is the left. Yeah, uh, I'm not so a big fan of that one. There's the Zorro chart just for this five minute interval. Hard to see what's going on here. So really our truly useful curve is this net power release curve right here. Now, all right, so we go out, I went out first day, releasing more power on the left leg when I stand, sit down, release more power on the right leg when I sit down, when I do both, eh, I'm standing. I'm releasing more power on the left. When I'm sitting down, I'm releasing more power on the right. Okay, or close. All right, so let's go the next day. Okay, so now we go the next day, and what do we do? We do a similar test, but now I'm going to do the opposite thing. Okay, so I did the same five minutes. Okay, so I got five minute intervals here. There's the first one. This was standing, but now I knew, I said, well, gosh, I I really released more power with my left leg. I'm going to try and push really hard with my right leg now, okay? So let's look at the curve here. I'm pushing really hard with my right leg to try and even out my left leg while I'm standing. And I get pretty close. You know, they're pretty close. We look at the net power, bingo. I'm even, right? I'm even now. And I tell you, when I did this, I was really, really pushing hard with my right leg. It was burning, right? It was dying compared to my left leg. Right, I'm even now. So that's pretty interesting because now with some hard, big focus and emphasis and intention, I've got that right leg that is evening out the left side, okay, from a net power release perspective. What happens when I go the opposite? So now I've sat down and said, okay, well, when I sat down, normally I sat down and my right leg releases more power where I'm sitting, all right, but I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try and push as hard as I can with my left leg now, all right, while I'm sitting down. I'm going to kill it with my left leg as best I can, all right, so that's what I did. I went up that hill, I pushed as hard as I could with my left leg, and it was a pretty effective. I was able to actually release more power at that left phase total than I was with my right one by really killing it with my left leg. Okay, so that was like wow. Okay, but I mean that hurt. All right, that really hurt. Like that left leg was just really on fire. All right, not used to that. When I went to all both of them, again, you know, pretty even. Stand when I want to. Sit down when I want to you know, even them out. Now, the next day, day three, okay, went out and did this again, all right, day three, now I did left leg emphasis, okay, so I did left leg emphasis the whole time, seated and standing, okay, so I did seated and standing. So let's come over here, let's look at our mean maximal power curve, all right, there's our standing one, right? There's our standing one. Now remember, my natural tendency is to push harder with my left leg and release more power when I'm standing. Now I'm really pushing hard with my left leg to see what happens. Wow, blew it out of the water, 25 watts, okay? Huge. Look at the net power released over here, still huge, all right? 20 watts, 25 watts all across the board. My left leg, when I really want to focus on that and push it hard, I can crack some watts out, all right? So I can release a lot more watts on that left phase while standing. Sitting down, all right, what's happening over here sitting down, I'm now pushing as hard as I can with my left leg sitting down, all right? Well, we saw that yesterday, right? I did that yesterday, and I get pretty darn even there. Releasing power, again, boom, when I'm super focused on my left leg sitting down, I can actually 
have more net power release with my left leg than the right. Again, like I don't know if I can sustain it more than five minutes, but I can do it. All right, so it's there. Now day four, all right. Now day four comes. What do I got to do? Well, of course you know it, right? I've got to emphasize the right leg. So now I'm standing and doing the right leg as hard as I can. So now I'm standing, and when I stand up and I push as hard as I can with my right leg, look at there. I'm still not releasing as much power as I am with my left leg. What about net power? Yeah, close, right? It's darn close. It's close. If I look at the net power, it's pretty darn close. If I'm pushing as hard as I can with that right leg, it it it, it um is darn close. All right. Now when I sit down. Right leg emphasis right here, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, here we go. That's the one. Wrong one. Here's the right leg emphasis here. That one, I'm pushing as hard as I can with my right leg. <sighs> Holy smokes, all right? That thing is blowing it out of the water. 160, you know, watts on the left, 184 on the right, all right? We look at the net power released. That right leg is killing it. 177, 150. 191 to 160, 31 watts more over here, 162 to 147. You know, so a tremendous big difference with the right leg when I'm sitting down. Okay, so I can really release it. Now, back to the standing one. When I came back and analyzed this data, you know, that was the day that the that I realized what I was doing with this left leg. All right, because what I realized when I pushed really hard, all right, with that right leg, then I realized that I only wobble my bike while climbing to the right. So by forcing me to stand and having to push as hard as I could with my right leg, in order to do that, what did I have to do? I had to push my bike wobble it to the left, right? So I'm thinking about when you stand, right? You stand up and your left leg goes down, your hands push the handlebars over to the right side, your bike wobbles over to the right, then when the right leg comes over the top of the pedal stroke, the bike comes back to center, right? And then when the right leg goes down, you push the bike over to the left and it wobbles to the left, okay? So, well, what happens, right? Well, I found out that when I stand and climb, I never push the bike to the left when I push down my right leg. I only just wobble the bike to the right. So I'm standing off effectively off to the left side of the bicycle while climbing. So gosh, 20 years ago, I could have had somebody video me and I could have figured this out, right? They could have seen me and like, oh look, Hunter, when he stands, he just, wobbles his bike to the right and then he brings it back to center and wobbles it to the right and brings it back to center. Never actually wobbles it to the other side, all right, side. And let the weight of that right leg and the strength of that right leg push down on there, all right. So that's a big deal. That was a really big deal um, and something that is really um, interesting. So, you know, that's something that, you know, came out of that that all of a sudden was just like, wow, here is a learning, right, that has been, you know, that I only could figure out from looking at this data and actually going out and doing some testing, all right? So right away, my, the way that I stand has changed, all right? So now I wobble the bike left and right. I've got like an extra 10 watts without any more work, even 15 watts in some cases. At the same time, you know, it, I came back, I did this one more time, okay, and I came out and actually did this, uh, this climb right here, and well, it, that's not really fair to do, I did the entire climb there, but let's look back at this, and I started to look back at this data from the right side, and really the right side, my right hamstring and gluteal is stronger, okay? When I sit down and I release power on that right phase, I can just release more power on the right leg. And it's just a stronger uh, muscle in that leg. You know, we have, you know, our right arms and left arms aren't as strong, you know, blah, blah. We have imbalances. That's 
that's the way it is. Um, and that's really what happens. So with that left leg, I can either, you know, I can ignore it, right? Or I can say, well, you know, what I want to do here is I want to um, strengthen that hamstring in my left leg and also strengthen the gluteal of my left leg. Okay, so that way I've got some strength in there that really, um, you know, makes makes some difference. Okay, so that really makes a difference there. All right, so that's uh, that's where that is. That's where that is. So we've got some learning here that is um, is pretty good, and um, you know, all all those things are happening from that perspective when you know you match that left and right leg together. Um, you know, and uh, that's that's a big deal. You know, you've got to be able to say what's happening independently and from that perspective. So um, let's let this thing. This thing is uh, it's like choking here on this long big file. So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna let that kind of turn a little bit and. Uh, we'll uh, we'll stop that here. Let's just four squit this baby, and we'll come back uh, to WKO. We're gonna ignore that one. And sometimes that happens with the old uh, the old uh, files there, especially with some of these bigger ones. All right. So let's go back to this one here, and we'll uh, we'll pull it in. All right. So let's come back over to our PowerPoint here, and you can kind of understand a little bit more about what we did. All right. So again. You know, this is the the case study that I that I did, and how we we implemented that. Okay, so it's a left and right leg thing. Now, this is um, if you want to read this protocol, all right. I've got this protocol um, on uh, the Hunter Allen uh, Power Blog. Okay, I should have had that loaded up for you, but it's under Hunter Allen Power Blog in here. It's right here in the front. An introduction to left right power data. Okay, So this explains everything that I just talked about and at the same time it gives you these pedaling asymmetry tests. I've got one for the hill climbing, I've got one for the flat, here's the actual protocol, here's um, you know how this works out from the bilateral uh, leg discrepancies, etc. So these things are on here. So just check that out, that's right there, it's easy to see, not, not, a, not a, a very Super complicated article, but a good one. All right, so a real good one. So have a look at that. All right. So um, from that perspective, why don't uh, why don't we open it up to uh, questions and answers here, and uh, let's see what we've got uh, with questions. All right, Craig. Craig says, do the Garmin vector pedals provide the underlying data for the pedal metrics pack? Yes, they do. So any of these power um, left right pedals that have the ant plus metrics the only one that I'm not certain of is the bebop pedals okay I haven't ridden the bebop pedals um, but I know all of the rest of them will create a dot fit file and it'll give you those pedaling metrics okay so um, is it caused by muscle imbalance? You know, I think that Chris asked, this is a great question, Chris, you know, I think that's exactly what happened with that right side, okay? I think there is a muscular imbalance on that side, okay? So I think that's one of the things that you can find from this information is you can find a possible muscular imbalance and then correct it, all right? So end of the day, what will be uh, interesting and likely um, is getting to the underlying uh, causality of the right leg power discrepancies. And we need normal data, normative data for what would be considered acceptable. We also need interventions. What do we do, right? Great question, Joe, right? It, that you have to be able to, right? This is only valuable if you can make a change and that change is a positive impact, right? So let's say, for example, I, I, I spend a bunch of time in the weight room, like, you know, okay, I'm gonna strengthen my left hamstring and my left gluteal, didn't do anything else, right? Just rode my bike, but then did a bunch of left hamstring curls and uh, left gluteal curls, um, and made that leg stronger, would my total power go down or up, 
right? Because that left hamstring is stronger, maybe it's going to mess up my balance the opposite way. Don't know. All right, that's one of those things that you know you just you don't know yet until you try, and that is the harder question: is can we make a change? It was really obvious from my form, all right, that hey, this was a change. I got 10 watts right away. Okay, um, there we go. Have you noticed by changing C position and help with opening hamstrings? Does it? affect the GPA metric? Chris, that's a great question. I have not changed any of the C positions and done that test. Um, that would be a great test to do. Um, and I tell you what would be really cool is to do it on a road bike versus a time trial position. And that's one of my um, queries in that article that I just showed you is, you know, if you have a time trial bike, you want to maybe do it on your time trial bike and do it versus your road bike. That would be a great way to, uh, to look at. You know, so that could really impact, you know, what's absorbed and what's released. Okay, really could. So that would be a great study and a good question to ask. Um, is there any workaround for one-sided power meters? Kyle, unfortunately, there isn't. Um, one-sided power meters are only going to give you that left leg. They're going to double that power for the right side. Okay. Now, I need to give you a caveat here, too. There are um, two power meters out there that know where top dead center is and bottom dead center is. That is the quark and the power to max. All right, and those two know it, right? and so they give you a balance, okay? Because and it's kind of this hokey balance because it's basically what they know is they know the positive phase of the right side, and they can measure the positive phase of the right side because the spider is on the right side, the power meter is on the right side, and they know the total watts, right? So let's say the total watts is 300, and the positive phase on the right side is 150. So they're saying, okay, well the other side must be 150, all right? 150, 150 is 300. Well, they're completely ignoring any gross power absorbed. They're completely ignoring any negative power, all right? So that's why, like, for both the Quark and the Power Max, you know, I just well, I wouldn't even consider any of those metrics to be valid at all, okay? I just wouldn't even look at them, all right? So just just keep that in mind. I just don't. They're 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 completely ignoring the uh, Zor power. All right. Now, what's the best way to get left right balance close? All right. The track bike fixed gear one leg drills is weights really the answer? All right. Well, Andre, great question. You know, that's one of those things that says, okay, look, you know, um, you know, being uh, on the track that could be a really great way. Doing rollers, riding on the rollers, that could be a great way. Um, you know, I mean, I think that a lot of new riders, um, you know, have, have aren't using rollers anymore, right? We've all gone to these smart trainers where all these new riders, man, they need to spend like two years on the rollers in the winter, right, and get their pedaling strokes smooth and effective and economical. Um, you know, so I think those are one ways to do it. I think that, um, you know, when you find true strength discrepancies, like, you know, possibly what I've seen in multiple athletes, then I think it's, it's where, you know, strength training is going to be the answer. Um, the problem with it, again, is you've got to integrate that strength training into the bike and how you actually do it on the bike. But if you're doing both at the same time, then you can, you can, you can make that happen. All right? Strength training one leg could improve efficiency as VO2 max potential as well as correct balance. Possible, right? Very possible um, that that could occur, all right? So that's uh, a good one. That's a good one. Chris Meyer says, um, you know, also testing maybe the anterior hip tilt, okay? So um, depending on how the hip is rolled forward or backward um, and how much at what angle, could really impact your gross power absorbed and your gross power released. All right, so that's something that um, is is definitely you know at the top of my mind here, and uh, I think that um, you know that could be uh, a factor that we could really see some information for down the road. So 
let's keep looking at that. Let's keep looking at that. All right. Um, that's it for the questions. Anybody else have any other questions there? All right. Super. Super deal. All right. Cool. Very good. Well, I hope this has given you a primer on this, and I hope that one of the things that you take home here is um, just how this is created, okay, and how important that you understand this graphic alone is. Um, you know, to me, this is where once you wrap your mind around the fact that you've got a left leg pressing down and a right leg opposing it, and a right leg pressing down and a left leg opposing that, then all of a sudden this left-right power data takes on a whole new life, okay? All of a sudden this starts to become very valuable as you use WKO4 software and looking at GPA, GPR, that could be really, really um, a good one to look at, all right? So certainly a, uh, a big one that is um, important. All right, Mashiro here has a, a question. I guess left-right balance can come from body balance and core balance. Could we only fix it on the bike? No, I think you know, it's very likely all right, that um, there could be core issues that you could fix. Um, maybe that would, that would um, fix it as well. Um, and I think also that you could fix it on the bike and maybe you could fix it in, you know, again, in strength training or other ones. All right, so that's good. Um, question here from Andre, is the future of left-right and power in the pedal version of power meters? Um, you know, I don't think it's just necessarily in the pedals. Um, I, I, you know, the, the crank-based ones are good too. Uh, the info crank is very nice. It's very accurate. It works really well too. So um, Pioneer is doing a tremendous job. They're selling tons of these things um, and, and, and uh, they're making some inroads there on, in the crank world as well. So, um, you know, I don't think it's just pedal-based. I think it's really, you know, looking at it and thinking about it um, from that perspective of what does left and right do. So um, there's, there's options out there. It depends on what you want, all right? So that's it. A uh, question here from, uh, from, from Gary. What uh, about power generated by pulling up with the leg calf from 7 to 11? Well, if you could do that, you would see that this yellow line here in this example, it wouldn't go negative, okay? And that is possible, all right? So some of the data that I've seen, especially the factor crank, is that this op opposing leg never goes negative. It continues to create positive power along that 7 or let's say 6 to 12 o'clock area. Okay, so if that's the case, right, and you can do it on both legs and produce power positively going forward on the gross power release phase, boom, you got more watts, right? You've got more watts, period. All right, now the question is, um, can you really do it? Can you do it consistently? And is it worth it? Right? Because you might have to spend a lot of energy to really pull up to only capture 10 watts. You may actually spend more energy pulling up than actually what you're capturing um, in that, than that phase. So that would be my concern is how much energy you have to spend to do that. Is there a cost-benefit relationship that would be a positive one on the total power? Okay, so that would be one that I would, I would question. All right. Um, Good question, though. Good question. All right, that's it. Okay, super. All right, thanks, Hunter, well, I so think much. That's it for me. Yeah, thanks, thanks Hunter. Tim. Really appreciate it, everybody. As always, this will be recorded for those who want to watch it again. Um, if you sync your WK4 with Training Peaks, the uh, pedaling charts are in the chart library. So. Um, the chart library refreshes by sync. So if you were to sync yours, it would load up there and work. So just go ahead and sync it. You'll find your little alert red button will come on, and the charts that Hunter showed will be in your chart library. Oh, there it is. Look, look at there. If you can see my screen, there it is right there. Four. There's yep. the red letter alert. 
So they're up there cool. at the workout level ready to go. So you guys can grab them and go from there. Thanks, everybody, attending for attending. Really appreciate it. Um, look forward. I know next weekend uh, Frank Overton is doing a webinar. You can sign up on that education page, and, of course, we'll be promoting it in the WKO4 venues. Frank is talking about uh, building threshold power in his presentation using some new metrics and some new ways he's – not new metrics, but some new ways he's looking at metrics. So hopefully we'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night.